quite an interesting study we got in 1 Corinthians 12. A more continuation of what we were speaking about last night. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Well, this is something you can't put in a box. This is something you can't buy. Simon the sorcerer thought he could buy and Peter condemned him. Brethren, save people. I would not have you angry. I don't want you unknowing. I want you to have knowledge. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away with those dumb idols, even as ye were led. <laughs> Look what Paul says about their religion before Christ. It's dumb. Do you know what the word dumb in the Bible means? It doesn't mean no. It means it can't speak. When I grew up in a, in a religion I had, there were statues all around the building. And none of them ever talked to me. Yeah. And that's the focus of their religion. It don't talk. There are people come to your door that they've got, they got magazines. You open up the pages. The pictures can't talk. The images can't talk. You ever had the Bible talk to you? you? Ever be reading the Bible on your own? Like, wow, thank you, Lord. I really needed that sword. Okay, so they're dumb. Imagine all the world involved in religion, and God's going to say, you know, Lord, I was a, I was such and such at the Great White Throne Judge. Lord, I was this part of this church. That was dumb. How dare you call my religion dumb? All right, religion, will you speak for him? Come on, religion. Say what about the, anything about this guy. Come on. Oh, that's right. It's a dumb religion. Do you realize religion cannot speak for your deeds before God? And yet, if I go before God, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Hey, Father, it's the blood. It's my blood. He's got my righteousness. Christ speaks where religion doesn't. Wherefore I, you know, dumb, I mean, you got to be nice and sweet with people. Look what Paul is. Wherefore I give you to understand. See, he doesn't want you to be uh, in the dark. That no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed. If you're saved, what could be one way of calling Jesus accursed? When you remove his deity of being God. He's just a man. He was a good teacher. How about, can I say like this? When you're angry, you say, Jesus Christ. Aren't you cursing? But you can't say those things when you have the Spirit of God. You know who Jesus is. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. No one who is unsaved can say Jesus is Lord. Because you know as a Christian, I have a hard time calling Jesus Lord. Because I keep taking him down off the throne and putting something else there. I keep serving other things other than Jesus in my life. And I'll be the first one in a minute. I don't serve Jesus as my Lord all the time. What makes you think that someone who is lost is going to say, Well, that's my Lord. No one. I fail with the Holy Spirit in me. And only by the Holy Spirit can I say that's Lord. And then the Holy Spirit say, really? You mean that conduct you just did? You really going to call him Lord? Where there is no such conscience in a lost man. And you'll see churches a lot. The Pentecostals and all. Jesus is the Lord. And there's another place like this. I forget where uh, it calls him the Lord. And it says, Jesus is Lord. This one says, the. Now, there are diversities of gifts. But the same spirit. We're all one spirit. But there's all kinds of different things that that spirit can give us. There are differences of administration. But the same Lord. There's the pastor. There's the deacon. There's the treasurer. There's just a person that sits in the pew. There's somebody who goes door knocking. There's somebody who puts the tracks out. There's somebody who answers the phone. There's all kinds of administrations. There's all kinds of departments or offices. But we have that same capital L-O-R-D. 
under the same spirit. And there are diversities of operations, how we do things. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. And like I say, we talked about the Lord's Supper last, last night. Some churches do it once a year. Some churches do it 52 times a year. Some churches do it, every, you know, on a drop of a hat. That's okay, because they already say, you know, whenever you do it, as often as you do it, that's what that church does. There's nothing wrong with it. This church, you know, they start service at 1130 and gets out at 1. Okay, fine. That's, there's no cause in the Bible for time. This one church may not sing before the, the preaching and sing after the preaching. Okay, fine. One church may not use any instruments. Okay. There's all kinds of departments and there's all kinds of operations. One church may not do ministries. You know? But is it the same spirit? Is it the same Lord? Is it the same God? Then there's unity. They just don't do it like you do it. As long as they do it biblically. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So what God has given you is for God's profit and for your profit. The reason that we were made, Romans, I mean, Revelation chapter 4, is for God's glory. He's given us ability, given me a loud voice. That irritated my parents growing up. And I know what that voice is. I could scream out out in front of the field and, and proclaim the gospel. God said that loud voice, I know he's going to use it. What am I going to use it for? What profit will I use my loud voice? Well, I can go on the radio. I can get a job for one of these sport places, you know, the ball game. I can make announcement, the guy hit the ball, all that, and make money. That'd be a good profit. Or I could stand with the gospel and proclaim to make sure everybody can hear me in the area. And people have told us they can hear me 360, 360 degrees around me. Preaching. And that prophet goes to crowns. As I said, there's been many young colored women who God has given an excellent voice and they have given it to Satan. They made money. But... The spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Do you think that spirit would give it to you for the profit so you can use it on the world? That's contrary. That spirit would give it to you to use for God and God's glory. For the one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. Okay. Are you wise to what the Bible says? And not the entire Bible. No one knows the entire Bible. All right, give thanks to your pastor. No. Give thanks to your Bible teacher. No. When you have wisdom of what the Bible says, give thanks to the Holy Spirit. That's who gives. You're listening to a Bible school. You're listening to Sunday school. You're listening to a preaching message. you got a tape in the car. You're reading your own Bible. And a spark of wisdom comes. Don't you glorify God. Give God the credit. Say, God, thank you. But that man preached. No, it ain't that man. It's that Holy Spirit using that man. Now, that's why I deter for certain preachers that get in that pulpit because I don't think the Spirit of God is coming from their mouth. No man that denies the Bible, I believe, can have that Holy Spirit and is going to teach me any word of wisdom. I'll strive away. To another, the word of knowledge. So there's a difference between wisdom and the difference of knowledge. To know the word. I know how to pronounce them. In the old, old church services, oh, they used to have the reader. And what he would do is he would say, congregation rise. And he would have an elegant voice, an elegant word knowledge, how to pronounce word. And Let's say take tonight's lesson. He would read 1 Corinthians 12 to you and you would follow along. He may not understand what 1 Corinthians 12 says. That's the pastor's job. But his job is so the people can see, oh, that's what that word sounds like. And that's why I like using the the uh, the online reading for the Bible from our family, because so we can hear the words read to me. And if a word I don't know 
I put that that pronunciation key you see in the dictionary. And I still mess it up, but people will hear. Faith cometh by hearing. That guy would read to the church, and then the pastor would give up and show wisdom to what was known. That's by the Spirit again. Look what the Holy Spirit does for us. And yet the Holy Spirit does not want attention. The Holy Spirit does not want to be worshipped. To another faith by the same Spirit. Do you have faith? Do you thank the Spirit of God for that? Where else is your faith going to come from? Somewhere along the line, a person in your life, a human, that you look up, whatever it is, something in some way, they're going to downfall you. Whether serious or, you know, just a light little thing, they're going to hurt your feelings. And that does do a little credibility to the faith. But here's faith by the Spirit of what? God. This is the faith like, in going through hard times, I can do it. I can do it. To other, the gift of healing by the same Spirit. Now, who would that be today? Doctors. People who come up with medications. You, now, now I'm not talking about today's medication where you got to have a whole half hour to explain all the side effects. But when you look at penicillin and you look at uh, uh, chlorophyll and you look at the, the anesthesiology that they've used, those men were saved and had a prayer life that helped us Christians today. And we don't even thank the Holy Spirit for, you know, we just open up a bottle of aspirin. Well, somebody had to show that guy what aspirin can do for you by the Spirit. Now, is that healing me taking my hand, smacking you in the forehead, and giving you a big headache, falling down the ground, getting a concussion? You could be healed of, of you know, of, no. No. Scripture with Scripture, this is not the healing of the apostles in Jesus Christ, but there can be healing. It says over there, James anointing the, the sick and praying for them. When my wife was deadly sick in the hospital room, I called four to the elders of church together, and we laid oil on her, and we prayed for her. I'm going to tell you, I I wouldn't even say less than 12 hours. I'm going to say no more than 20 hours. I went back in that room, and she's like, hi, how you doing? That was me. Now, they didn't do nothing to heal her. They just, we just did what the Bible said. I walked in the pastor's office and said, Pastor, you know, we're, can we try this? Is this unscriptural? He said, no, it's not unscriptural. Can we, can we, we're, we're at the point now. She's, and I'm not going to, let me not denounce the preacher. And the, no, I'm, they're not the ones that healed, but the Spirit. And the Spirit used them. Think of your coffee cup. What would your coffee cup be if you didn't have the handle? It'd be hot, too hot to hold. You wouldn't be able to do. But that handle helps you. God uses man as a handle on the coffee cup to help you in your life. But give the credit to God, not the man. That message, man, that was just ripping down your life. You, oh, great. Give God the praise. And I have written in my Bible several places. So. I come across it. It says, give God the credit or repent. And I'm, I'm going to some, some message. Wow, that was a great message by that man. No, wait a minute. No, it's God. Use it for me. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Give God the credit. To another, the working of miracles. Well, that's, that's died out. When the Bible's written in entire, as with laying on hands of the healing. Are there miracles today by God? That's a tough question, isn't it? Because you know there's so many scam artists out there. I guess to reveal if there is there, all kinds of miracles. But whether it's true or not, it's going to have to be judged at the judgment of the seed of Christ or the great white son's judgment. But are we going to put God, you know, in a, in a box that he can't do nothing? That I 
went in paranoia today thinking I screwed up the checkbook and it should not be where it is right now? That's called out a miracle. Oh, you mean you mean moving mountains and and, and a little little mustard seed kind of thing. You know, little miracles. To another prophecy. I'm that's one I do. I will tell you a prophecy. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will burn in the lake of fire. And I know Christians who pulled away from us because I preach about hell. You don't know prophecy. Do you realize when you tell someone where they're going according to the Bible, you are a prophet. You are prophesying to them. If you give them Bible advice, it comes out of the Bible. You know, I got a problem with this, or I got a problem with my wife, I got a problem with my son, I got a problem with my job, and you show them what the Bible says to do, and there is an end result. When I tell you, if you do what God tells you to do, there are crowns to be earned. That's prophecy. To another, discerning of the spirit. Now, that's interesting. Because we just passed by the spirit of Christmas. And with the spirit of Christmas, would you ever think that was anything to be Bible? All right, discerning the spirits. When, when I grew up as a child, you, my wife and I, they used to call it spirit shops. Is not that any place for a Christian? You know, where the bottles would have snakes and XXX. We go to the farmer's market, not the farm. we go to the flea market, and there's a woman who has the spirit of this city, and I like to pick on her, and she likes to yell at me back. Well, lady, if you didn't know I was coming, what's more, even worse, the last time she was, she was sitting there playing, uh, uh, the, um, what's that card game? Solitude. If you had a, the spirit of divination, why did you come to work today? See? Is this the spirit of God making me do this? Is this the spirit of Satan making me doing this? Or is this the man spirit? There's three spirits that can control your life. To another diverse kinds of tongues. That would be missionaries. And that's not... That's Spanish, French, English, bang your thumb, um... Yeah. And to another interpretation of tongues. What did he say? But all these worketh that one and the same, uh, excuse me, self, same spirit. So they all come from one. They're all one from the Holy Spirit. Dividing to every man severally as he will. There's a division again. Not every Christian gets all these. Some may get two. Some may get three. Some may only get one. Some may get four. God, you ask my wife, again, as a testimony. God has not given me the, the thing of healing. I could never be a doctor. You'd be fixing me. But prophecy, knowledge, wisdom, I think I can claim those. The only tongue I know, and I have a hard time with that, is English. So that's not mine. I know missionaries right now. They're, they're learning the language. They've got the language. They have to have an interpreter while they're going around. And that's all from the Holy Spirit. Thank the Holy Spirit and God. Okay. Four. As the body is one. Okay, one body. And has many members. Bones, muscles, limbs, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ, the church. We don't even know how many people are saved, born again, Bible believing, Christ, dead, living, and yet, 
we are one body and we'll meet one day at the rapture in the clouds to become one for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body now where is water on that one and yet they'll try to dig water out what is baptism this verse right here ruins spraying sprinkling fountain in whatever you want to do because you see what it says baptize into one body that's immersed so when you are saved the holy spirit immerses you inside the body of christ you are in it how's that imagine imagine if we go by these other religions you, you get saved the holy spirit sprinkles you into the body <laughs> And you just drip on down and end up on the floor. No. Whether we be Jews or Greek or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Ooh. How's the Roman Catholic handle that drinking in the Holy Spirit right there? You ever think about that? Is that to make the same kind of drink that Jesus said, here, take my blood? It's all spiritual. Come on. If it's not spiritual, can you see, just picture yourself, one body of a human and having me sticking out maybe as an elbow while John the Apostle sticking out as the forearm and, you know, Peter as index. I mean, it's spiritual. Body is God saying, I need something, the reverence that you will understand. Body is never to be literal. And there's probably somebody out there who probably think that this is a water baptism and you got to drink something to be in the body of Christ. For the body is not one member, but many. So I am not the church. You are not the church. We are of the church. All right. If the foot say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? I like to see your foot talk. Your foot down there. Hey, I can't hold a coffee cup. <laughs> I'm nothing. See you later. When you get up in the morning, I'll be gone. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, I can't get to the coffee cup. Get back here. Will you? Just because you can't hold that coffee cup. I know coffee cup, everybody, their, their eyes are perking up right now. That's perfect. Man. If I don't have that foot, I can't get to the coffee cup. I need that foot to get there. Now you got a little, the, the roast beef piggy toe. He's gone. But you know, God had a use for him. I don't know what it was, but my my roast beef piggy toe is gone. No, he's, the he's the one that had none. All right, he's the one that had none. But there was a use for it. What was it? I can tell you exactly what that. It keeps the little toe from joining in and crooking itself to the rest of the toes and breaking other bones. That's what it's there for. Probably messed up my whole foot. All right. So, if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, did you hear what I said? I read the verse to you. Did you hear what I said? Well, you need the ear to hear what I just said to you. See, the eye is good. I, you can follow along. I am not of the body, is therefore not of the body. But they hear it. The eye is important, man. I pray for my eyesight. I got that glaucoma, or whatever they tell it. I got to get insurance so I can get that fixed. My wife and I, cataracts. But the ears, too, they hear the word. I need both of them. I can't, you can't say, you know, this least important. These things they say about, you know, the appendix and the tonsils and all that, they're important. Tonsils will prevent a child from choking to death. They found out that's what they use. It will prevent 
choking hazards. That's a very great use. And there's other things they say. Well, we won't get into that. But you just can't say, you know. So, and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. And some Christians will think, you know, I'm not doing nothing. Do something. Even if it's just prayer. Take one of those wipes you, you get in the store and come into church early and just wipe down all the tops of the pews because people sneeze and cough and, and blow on them. And it's how it is. We did that in the church one time. Just wipe them down. That's, you're doing it for the Lord. You have purpose. You're help, trying to help other people not getting sick. If you don't think you're important, you're not doing anything, do something. But if you are doing something, you're doing something, you're needed. Listen, even if you just sat on that pew Sunday morning, Sunday night, midweek service, that's a lot better than the preacher getting up there with a message and looking out and saying, nobody. And I've sat like that. I have gone out to a message and two people were there. Thank God for those two. They may not have thought, hey, they did me great joy because what would I have done if there been no one there? Talk to myself? If the whole body were an eye, where were hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? See, we're not all the same part. But every part has its purpose. I guarantee if you were to get some medical book and you would take the, the tiny, every cell has its own pur 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 yeah, purpose. I guarantee if they were studying out, probably way this illustration, everything in your body, if you don't think it has a purpose, it has a purpose. So do you in the body of Christ. Now we write about the Lord's Supper. And do you realize if you do not do healthy to the body, you can become as a Christian, as a cancer, and God will have to remove you out? You will become sick. Then the whole body, we're going to see in a minute, the whole body is going to be affected. You can become weak. Well, you can't do a lot of things. We're going to see that in a minute. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? When you go through class, you, you know, you got the circulatory system, you got the digestive system, you got the nerve system, you got the muscles, you got the bone, and it's all one human body. The eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Yet. There was one man that we ran in Corinthians was having an a extramarital affair with his father's mother, father's wife, and Paul said, get rid of him. So what we're looking at is we're looking at Christians who are doing right. You have no business for a Christian who's doing his function in the body. Whatever it is, you have no right to reject him out, out of the body. Unless for sin. And gross sin that he won't repent. And I believe going by this, the eye cannot say to the foot, "Get out of here." You you scare a Christian off who is part of the body and doing what he can do to the best of his ability, you're in trouble because you're lacking. Again, I, I hate using illustrations, but I had them remove my toe because it first caught an infection, then it caught a second infection. Speaking with the doctor, he said, you know what, just to prevent other infections, and it's just my choice. It wasn't I had to have it. The toe was amputated because it could still affect my body. Now, I would not tell him, okay, doc, while you're down there, remove my big toe because there's nothing wrong with it. And they say with the big toes, that helps your balance. 
Well, if I were to say, Doc, lop off my big toe just for the heck of it, because I don't think it's doing anything, well, I'm going to be walking funny. And you remove somebody out of the church. Now, you can't remove them out of the body of Christ. But I'm talking about in the local assembly of the church that you remove that guy out and, and you're deformed. You got troubles. And yet, from your personal, not your personal, but your, your local assembly, that guy's still in Christ, but his place was supposed to be in your place. See, there's different parts. There's the head. Well, there's the left arm. There's the right arm. There's the trunk. There's the thigh. There's the right leg. There's the left leg. Think about the different major parts of your body. Circular. Think about them as individual churches, but we're all part of one body again. The eye cannot say it to the hand, I have no need of thee. What gives him the right? I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Nay, no. Much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. When was the last time you thought about the skin cells on your body? Except for when you had that itch. Hmm? Do you realize they say that there, there's micro, microorganisms right now on your eyeballs cleaning them? Do you ever think about them? There's little bacteria on your body right now cleaning your skin? Do you ever think about the blood going through in your veins right now? It, it, little things. You may not even know, you know, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable. Armpits. What on earth are armpits? What belly button? Men's nipples. What are they? And yet God put them there, not to say I got extra parts in, in, in the closet here. They all have a purpose. You don't think about your lymph nodes so you start getting cancer trouble. You don't think about thyroids until you, you get a little bit older in, in your female years. And you know what America's not thinking of? That's the, the, the less honorable and the littlest members. What a sperm and egg will do to produce a baby that, you know, you just abort it. That's life. That's a member of a woman's body. And our uncommonly parts have more abundant commonness. Commonness. Our ugly parts. The ones that you don't talk about. For our commonly parts have no need. But God has tempered the body together. See, it's not evolution. It is not evolution. If it was evolution, imagine where God, where, where evolution could have put your nose that you had to smell every day. Having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh. So the one that needs help, God's given more help to that part that needs help. That there should be no schism in the body, no troubles, no problems, no, hey, you know, we got, in other words, no clicks in the body. You don't have the digestive system sitting over here, you know, having their own thing without the nervous system. Because the nervous system needs to work with your digestive system, and your digestive system needs to work with your nervous system. You ever wonder when you get that, 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 that real great but terror feeling? Like you smell, you think you think your house is on fire. You smell, smell, and you feel it in your stomach. That shows those two systems work together. I'm told by a doctor.
you don't want your 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 blood to go congregate over here all by itself. Say, and we don't want to hang out with the brain. No. We got our own little clothes. The brain. Who the brain thinks he is? You'd be dead without the blood. How about the heart? Well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to have my own thing. No, the heart's going to work with the whole body. Schism. You don't want schism. You don't want it in the church, and yet there is. But that the members should have the same care one for another. Look at that. There it is. We're going to read more. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. All right? How often do you think of your little toe? Not prayer works. No. But man, when you're walking in the middle of the night and it's dark and you're on your way to the kitchen or the bathroom and you slam that little sucker against something, doesn't your whole body now recognize, hey, there's a little toe down there. Hi, guys. Hey, sister such and such just ended up in the hospital. Hey, guys, let's get prayer. Come on, start praying. Send all the nerve. Get extra blood down here. Get whatever it needs. There's, there's tension down here. Hell! Sorry, Thumb. We ain't got time for you right now. We got pain down in the lower extremity. Well, the members suffer. All the members suffer with it. Really? Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it without envying. And who do you think he is? I work harder than he did. I know more members versus an Ada, and I'm longer here, and, and, and you can pff, knock it off. The whole body, you know, there she is. She gets a ring put on her finger, and the whole body says, Hey, she finally found somebody. What a day. Everyone just rejoiced. That ring is gone on that finger. She is as happy as ever. Nothing can touch her right now. Everybody just relax. Just take it in. That anguish. A mother's about to give birth to a baby. The pain, the sorrow, the, the oh, oh. And then when that baby's born, everybody be happy. Put the pain away. It's a baby. It's alive. It's well. Thank God. You know, our body tells us when there's trouble and problems. We ought to listen. And whether one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice. All! Now ye are the body of Christ. And members in particular. What member are you? I don't know, but let's be it. And God has set some in the church. First apostles. They're gone now. There are no more apostles. But when Paul writes this, Peter, James, John. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing. So... Prophecy, telling you what's going to happen, teaching you the word of God comes before the miracles and healing. Helps. Helps. That's an interesting word in, in the list that God's given us. Helps. From who? The body. You know what they say? If you have an eye injury and, and they cover your eye, they say the, the other eye works twice as hard. The other eye try. Uh, I know you're incapacitated right now. I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to help you out here. Sometimes I gotta cover both eyes. Helps. Also, if you lose your sight 
or your hearing. Sometimes your smell is enhanced yeah. or your hearing can be enhanced if you lose your sight. Yeah. Your body gets in. Listen, your body has a great defense system. You get a virus, man, those white blood cells go right under your attack. That's what the church should be. White blood cells are your armory in your Bible. I mean, your body, excuse me. We ought to have people in the church armory. Stand right in there. He's got trouble. Governments. Romans 13, that we be protected, we obey the laws, and anybody doesn't, they'll have the government to get after them. That's a funny thing to show up in there. Diversities of tongues, language. Are all apostles? One religion thinks they are. All prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet, show I unto you a more excellent way. And I am not going to say nothing about the chapter markings. I believe that I believe they're honored by God. I really do. In the verse marking. But it should never have ended here. Because he says, I'm going to show you the more excellent way. In chapter 13, we're going to get into charity. All right. Do all have a good of hearing? Tongues, interpreted, apostles, teachers, miracles. I'm going to give you a little preview tomorrow night. Charity. What will charity do to you? It will have you help. Someone in the church. I, I listen. The only help you can do is you can pray. It will help you to suffer when they suffer. It will help you to rejoice when they rejoice. Charity. And charity is just not writing a check off and having a telephone. Not in the Bible. And Lord willing, we'll get into charity tomorrow.